Okay, good evening to everyone. Good evening po. Good evening. Doon po sa mga kasama namin po nag-join sa ating online uh, Zoom or whether it be FB, magandang gabi po sa bawat isa. At ganun din po sa ating kalagitnaan na nandito po, nakasama ko pong sumasamba sa Panginoon physically ay magandang gabi at isa pong kagalakan ng bawat isa na tayo ay sama-samang makapagpuri sa Panginoon at makapag-aral ng salita ng Panginoon. Katulad nga po ng sinasabi ng ating pastor, Pastor DM, for the past Wednesday at itong month na to, we are focusing on the theme of At the Cross, which we talks about the seven last words of Christ. Now, my question is this, who among us, yung mga nandito po, kasi yung mga nasa online, hindi ko naman <laughs> natin nakikita. Sino po dito sa ating kalagitnaan na kasama ko in the physical um, worship today, uh, sino ang nakakaalam sa atin ng kwento ng crucifixion ni Jesus Christ? Can I see your hands? The story of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. I don't know. <laughs> Basta, eh. the question is, kung alam mo yung story, somehow you're familiar with the storyline, you know what happened to the events. Alam po ba natin? Okay, one. <laughs> yung mga pastor po, hindi alam. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Three. How about the others? All right. It might be some of us I a little bit confused thinking about it. Ano nga ba, no, pastor? Kabisa, alam ko nga ba? So the point is this, the foundation of Christianity is Christ. If there is something that you need to know all throughout your Bible, it must be Christ. Sino si Kristo? Ano ginawa ni Kristo? Ano ang nangyari sa kanya? Ang muling pagkabuhay niya? Sapagkat the foundation of Christianity is Jesus Christ. Without Christ, there's no Christianity. Without Christ, you don't have salvation. That's a basic thing. So as you grow in your Christian life, as you know Christ in your life as your Lord and Savior, nawa sa journey mo sa Panginoon, simula nang nakilala ka sa Panginoon, makilala mo ang Panginoon sa buhay mo. Hindi lang siya bilang isang Savior. But you know Him, you know all about Christ. And how will you do that? It's always on His very words. Sa gabing ito, it's a perfect time for us to to look at those seven words, uh, seven last words of Christ. We have our PowerPoint this evening, and we're going to talk about the six, one of the seven words, which is the six, it is finish. It is finish. And this evening, just for us to have an overview, or just for us na ma- ma-recall natin, sa bawat isa sa atin na alam na ito, maganda po, it's for you na ma-recall mo lang itong seven last words in Jesus Christ. And for those who don't know, it's an opportunity for you to learn and know those last words of Christ. So here's the seven words. Very quick, Luke chapter 23, verse 40, uh, 34, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Second, Luke chapter 23, verse 43, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Number three, John 19, 26, Woman, behold thy son. Mark chapter 15, verse 34, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? John 19, verse 18, I thirst. And this evening that we're going to talk about, on John chapter 19, verse 30, it is finished. Luke, and the land, last one, Luke 23, verse 46, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Now the question for us this evening, anong, anong kinalaman nito? Pastor, anong significance na itong mga salita na ito ng ating Panginoon, the seven last words in our Christian life? On the past Wednesdays, naibahagi ito ng ating mga pastor. At sa gabing ito, we will just focus, sapagat kung titignan natin ito lahat, seven to, baka abutin tayo ng madaling araw pag diniscuss natin. But we're just going to focus on the, first, the, the sixth saying of Christ. It is finished. It is finished. Can you say it with me? It is finished. It is finished. Alright. So sa gabing ito, we are going to look at those significance. It is finished. But first, I want us to invite, inviting us to open your Bible. I believe you have your Bible, whether it be a physical Bible, whether it be a, a, a virtual Bible. Go to your Bible and open in John chapter 19, 
And we are going to read, sabay-sabay po natin basahin, whether it be uh, what translation you have, Tagalog man yan, English, go to John chapter 19, we're we'll gonna read verse 28, 29, and 30. Are we there? Say amen. Can I request everyone to please stand as we give reverence to the words of God? All right. John chapter 19, verse 28 to 30. All together, begin. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and there filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a hyssop, and put it in his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your words this evening. We pray, Father, that you open our hearts, you open our understanding, so that our hearts will be filled with your wisdom. We pray, Father, that the Holy Spirit will be the one who will teach in our midst, at kayo, Panginoon po, ang patuloy na maluwalhati sa amin as we understand your words. And help us, Father, to stand firm on the cross of Christ, to stand firm in our faith of what you have done for us. Thank you, Father, for your words. Bless your words into our hearts so that we may be able to apply it and be able to speak about it. And this is our prayer in Christ's most precious name. Amen. Makakupo na po ang bawat isa sa ating kalagitnaan. So now we are going to talk about the two important significance of the praise. It is finish. Ano nga bang significance ng salitang it is finish na sinabi ng ating, na sinabi ng ating Panginoon? Now, first, dalawang bagay lang po titignan natin sa gabi ito. First, it is the fulfillment of Christ's obedience. It is the fulfillment of Christ's obedience to the will of the Father. Now, it says, finish. The word finish literally means fulfilled, accomplished, complete. There's no fancy word when it comes to finish. Tapos na. Kompleto. Na fulfill. In the Greek word, it's just one word. It is finished, tetelestai. Tapos. When we say finish, it gives you the idea that you are given a task. Tama? Merong task. Whether you be a, a child, Pag binigyan ka ng magulang mo, inutusan ka, there is a specific task. And what you are going to do is to do it, and then you accomplish it. Same with, with our students sa ating kaligitan. You know what is performance task. For those who have studied in the AFCS, you know the word performance task. It was given to you by your teachers, and you are going to do it. And once you finish doing it, you can say, it's accomplished. It's finished. And the same with our job. You were given a specific job, whether it be a project, and your boss is expecting you to finish it. Tama? So, there's no fancy word when it comes to word finish. All of us understand, but pag sinabing it's finished, tapos na. Now, in the presence of Christ, when Christ used the word finish, it means a declaration of fulfillment. Merong siyang natapos. The question for us is, ano bang natapos niya? Ano bang natapos ng Panginoon? The text that we have, we said, we see the storyline after that Jesus Christ received that sour wine. He said, it is finished. But you might be asking sa ating kalagitnaan, Pastor, ano ba ang natapos ng Panginoon? Ano ang kanyang tinapos? Now, for us, we have to look back verse 28. Jesus said, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished. You see the same word. Accomplished or fulfilled or finished. This means that Jesus Christ has a perfect understanding. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya nagkamali. Nung sinabi niyang it is finished, alam niya kung ano yung sinasabi niya. It is, like, like, it is not like a student na experience namin sa studyante. Tapos na yung task, pero pag chinek mo, <laughs> hindi pa nagawa ng maayos. Sa mga nag-teacher dito, they know that. Right? But when Jesus Christ said it is finished, He knows perfectly what He is saying. Alam niya kung ano yung kanya sinasabi. He has a perfect understanding what is happening. 
And He came to this world to fulfill the task that was given to Him. So what was the thing that Christ fulfilled? Christ fulfilled the work of redemption. That cross of Calvary proves that Christ was able to fulfill the prophecy of the great redemption for humanity. At yun ang bagay na makikita natin way back seven years, seven thousand, seven hundred years ago. When Isaiah, when you go back to Isaiah chapter 53, I will encourage you to go back to Isaiah chapter 53 and you will see the prophecy about this great redemptive plan of God. 700 years ago, God declared through a prophet that this will be the redemption that must take place. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1 to 10. Let me read it for you. Who has believed our report? Or to whom was the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He has no form or kindliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And he hid, as it were, our face from him. He was despised and we did him. We did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was burst for our iniquities. The, the chastisement for our peace was upon him. And he was stripped and he were healed. All we like sheep are gone and strength. We have turned everyone to his own name. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. We, and he was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was held as a lamb to the slaughter and was sheep before his shearers are silent. He opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. And they made him his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit upon in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to burst him. He was put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. And he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. So if you will try to understand this prophecy of the Lord, Scholars in their time, prophets in their time, yung mga, yung mga pariseyo, inaalam nila to eh. Sino ba to? What will happen to this? Sino ang gagawa nito? And we find out in the scripture, as we study along the life of Christ, we see Jenny, from, from Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, may kita natin dyan, specifically in the book of John, may kita natin, Jesus Christ was able to fulfill all the prophecy of the coming Messiah. Not only the coming Messiah, but all the things that the Messiah is going to do. Including this Isaiah 53. That's why if you turn your Bible, John chapter 4, verse 43 at 34, Jesus said, My food is to do the will of Him who sent me and to accomplish the work. Jesus Christ has a perfect understanding of the work that he must accomplish. He said, I am going to do the work. I am going to fulfill it. John chapter 5, verse 36. But a testimony which is greater than the testimony of John, for the work which the Father has given me to accomplish. John 17, verse 4. I glorify you on the earth, having accomplished the work. So what was the work that Christ is talking about? The work of redemption. The work of redemption. So the thing is, when you see the words of Christ, it is finished. One thing that you must understand, dito sa sinasabi ni Cristo, when Jesus said, it is finished, it will mean, I have done the will of God. 
I did exactly what I sent out to do. Yun yung bagay na nasa isip ng Panginoon so Kristo. Alam ng Panginoon so Kristo what is being prophesied in the Old Testament 700 years ago. Alam niya kung ano yung kanyang gagampanan. And here comes the day, that appointed day, He died on the cross. Before He died on the cross, He said, It is finished. I was able to accomplish your will for my life. Bawat isa sa atin may kalooban ng Panginoon. As we try to contemplate doon sa salita ng Panginoon, hindi natin gagawin kung ano yung ginawa ni Kristo. It was done. It's complete. He gave it to you as a free gift so that you and I can be saved. But on the other hand, as a Christian, mayroong kalooban ng Panginoon sa bawat isa sa atin. There is a specific task that the God, God has given to each one of us. Yesterday, we, are, we have our discovering our spiritual gift as part of our activity in AFCS. And the thing is, we get emphasis that once you become a Christian, you have a part in the body of Christ. The Bible tells us that we are not all the same. We are different parts in the body of Christ. Not, can be, not everyone can be hands. Hindi pwedeng lahat mata, hindi pwedeng lahat bibig. Hindi lang lahat pwedeng pa. In the body of Christ, you and I has a specific task. Meron kanya tayong, kanya-kanya tayong task. And for us, as we try to contemplate in the works of Christ, Christ is our perfect example. Christ is our example. We can see that in the scripture. If Christ was able to accomplish the task that He was given to Him, we as His follower, our challenge is, are we going to finish our task? I don't know kung ano ang task na pinagkaloob sa'yo ng Panginoon inside the body of Christ, inside here in AFC, uh, FFBC. It is the Lord who appoint you. It is the Lord who give you the specific task. Generally, we can say that every one of us are given a task to evangelize, proclaim the gospel of Christ. Yes. But the question remains, are we going to accomplish the task? Is it in our mind that I am going to finish the task that God has given to me? For Christ, He was able to do it. But you as a follower of Christ, is it in our sensibility that the Lord has given you a task and that task must be accomplished? So for us, let's imitate the character of Christ. Never lose focus on the task that God has given to you. For Christ, He was able to do it. But you as a follower of Christ, are you going to finish the task? It might be, baka hindi mo pa alam yung task mo. My question is, do you know your task inside the body of Christ? And if you know it, are you going to finish the task? That's how we take it. So for us, the first thing that we need to see when Jesus Christ said, it is finished, lo and behold, it simply means He was able to fulfill the will of the Father. The second thing this evening that I would, I would like us to notice is that second significance, it is the full, full payment for man's redemption. It is the full payment for man's redemption. The word tetelestai does not only means it's complete, it's not just about finish. The other word that you can find is that it was also used for accounting term. It simply means paid in full. Fully paid. So the idea is that when you buy certain things, um, kung bumili ka ng kotse, nagbabayad ka dyan. Tama? Bumili ka ng motor, nagbabayad ka dyan. There will be a point of time that you will be able to fully pay it. And that's the idea. It is finished. I already paid it full. Ganon din sa mga estudyante po, pag nag-aaral ka, may tuition fee ka, hindi mo naman kagad mo bayaran. Tama? May mga ano yan, partial, partial payment until the such point that you were able to reach it. 
paid in full. You understand the word? Paid in full. Jesus Christ said, He does not only tell us that it is just finished. Finish. He wants us to understand that He was paid it full. Ano ba yung binayaran niya? That's the question for us. We understand that in our Christian life, Christ paid in full the penalty of our sins. There are many, many passages in the scripture that we're going to see there. And that's my challenge for you. Just read. Read your Bible. Don't just depend on me. Don't just depend on the preachers. You need to do your part. Read your Bible and look at it. How many times that the Bible tells us that Christ paid for our sins so that you will be redeemed from your sins? I want us to give a special attention when it comes to the word tetelestai. It was written in the present tense. Hindi po ako ganun kagaling sa English, but when we try to look at it in the scripture, sa Greek, it was written in the present tense. It means a complete action. A complete action. It is finished and it remains finished. That's a complete action. Nangyari na at talagang tapos na. So hindi siya ibig sabihin tapos na, tapos paglipas ng panahon ay kailangan mo ulit ituloy kasi may kailangan ka improve. The idea of being complete, or the idea of being fully paid is that it was already accomplished by Christ. It was already paid in full. And its fullness, it transcends from generation unto generation. It was being paid on the cross of Calvary and it's still paid until our present time. That's how far is that accomplishment of Christ. At kung tatanungin natin, meron ba tayong nagawa doon? Wala. Yung kaligtasan mo, wala ka nagawa dyan. It is all the work of Christ on the cross of Calvary. The big idea is that the complete payment for man's salvation was accomplished only by Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. You cannot add, you cannot subtract to what Christ has done. It is complete. Close. Wala kang pwedeng gawin doon. Only the blood of Christ is sufficient for you and for me to be saved. The thing is, pag tinignan mo yung salita ng Panginoon, the word complete, when Jesus Christ said, it is complete. Jesus Christ did not actually thinking about complete na lahat sumunod sa Kanya. Know the story? The life of Christ? Hindi naman lahat sumunod sa Kanya. In fact, when the time of nang siya din nakip, all the disciples left Him. In the time of Christ, He was not able to, He was able to do miracles. But all people believe, na? The point is, Jesus Christ was still able to say, I have finished it. Because the greatest work the work that he knows that he must complete, the mission that he must do is to die on the cross to provide salvation for you and for me. And this salvation is complete. He paid it full. Those people who believe on the first century Christian, they are saved. Now in our present time, 21st century, those who believe on the finished work of Christ can be saved. Because the work of Christ on the cross of Calvary is complete. Paid in full. Sa atin po bilang mga Kristiyano, the thing is, as we try to understand this word, it is finished, one thing that we have to take it in our hearts your salvation and my salvation is complete because of what Christ has done. Not because of your effort, not because of your money, not because of your religion, not because of, I don't know, people around you. No. Your salvation is complete and secured because of what Christ has done on the cross. And the actual thing that we are to do as a response is to put our faith on the finished work of Christ. For us, as a response, don't let anyone tell you, 
na pwede mong ato, dapat kang gumawa ng work para ma- ma-save ka so that you can earn the, the, the approval of God. You do something work. That's already the problem of the first century Christian. Until now, that's a problem. People still believe in the lies of the devil that you need to add works so that you can complete your salvation. Na, na, na. It's already complete on Jesus Christ. Only in Christ can we find complete salvation. But for us, the thing is this. We understand that Christ was able to fulfill, complete His work. Tama? Sa atin, bilang isang mga mananampalataya, the thing is, alam natin darating ang Panginoon. Alam natin may binigay na task ang Panginoon sa atin. When it is time to go to go to the Lord, can we say, Lord, I have finished my work. Father, I have done my work. I have done my part. Maybe dumating ang Panginoon or una, una kang kunin ng Panginoon, but you will be able to say, Lord, I have done my work. That is a challenge for us. If Christ is our example, it's a challenge for us that we are also to finish our work. Let me close with what Paul tells us. Slide, please. What Paul tells us, tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 and 8. He said, The time of my departure has come. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is a reserve for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for His appearing. If Christ was able to say, it is finished, at the point of dying, Paul was not yet able to die during this time. But Paul said, I was able to finish the race that is set for me. I I am about to finish the work that God is setting for me. And for us as a challenge, you and I, are child of the Lord. You are I are servants of the Lord. You and I are accountable before the Lord in such a way that when we face the Lord, the Lord tells us, thou good and faithful servant. That words cannot be here. here. You cannot hear that words. Not unless you have that confidence to, tell, to, say, to tell the Father, Father, I have finished the work that you have said to me. So for us, Christ gave us an example. He said, it is finished. For us, it's not about salvation na, Lord, I have finished my salvation na. It's complete in Christ. But the takeaway for us, you have a task. You have a mission to do. You have to finish it. So that you will receive the word of the Lord. Well done, the good and faithful servant. Shall we pray? Father God in heaven, I pray that your words ay bagay po na mag-remind sa puso namin na katulad ni Kristo, you have given him a special task which is to bring about, to accomplish the greatest need of human being which is eternal life, redemption through Christ Jesus our Lord. Father, thank you because we cannot add, we cannot subtract. It is complete. It is sufficient. Ang kaligtasan, Panginoon, ay nagagaling sa inyo. At salamat, Lord, because you have given it to us for free. And we, it's a matter of us placing, putting our faith, our trust on the finished work of Christ on the cross. But as we respond to your words and looking at the example of Christ, looking at the example of Paul, Father, we pray that you help us to be faithful. Help us to be mindful of the task that you have given to us. Help us to be serious, to fulfill your work that you have given to us so that comes the day, the appointed day that we are going to meet you. We will hear your sweet words. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. So Father, thank you for our time. We pray as, as we spend our time praying with one another, praying for our, uh, for our church. I pray, Father, that we be able to glorify you in everything that we're going to do. Thank you for your words. Thank you for the Holy Spirit as we study your word. 
And this is our prayer in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good evening po sa bawat isa.